Hello, everybody. I'm Jordi Bailina. I am the technical lead at Polygon Hermes. And uh, right now, what we are developing, developing right now is the ZKBM, uh, fully compatible Ethereum uh, EBM, a roll-up where you can execute any smart contract, where you can deploy any smart contract, and so on. We started this project some month ago. First, in the first, in the first part of the presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of how the project is moving forward. And then I'm going to focus in, a, in the bridging between layer one, layer two, and between layer two, layer two, that we are going to use in the ZK ABM. OK? So if we see a, a big picture of uh, what do we have in, in what we have to build in order to build the ZK ABM, this is the main, the main things. We see we have some set of smart contracts, uh, coordinator selector. We have the L L1, L2 bridge. This is the one that I'm going to talk about. We have a node and we have a prover. The most important thing of this slide is what we don't have to build, what's not here. Here, for example, we don't see a compiler. We don't see, so we, don't, we want to use Solidity, the same Solidity and the same opcodes that uh, you have in the compiler. We don't have uh, tooling because we want to use, um, so MetaMask should be compatible and all the tooling. At the end, the node should publish something very similar what would be the RPC idea. So these are the main blocks, okay? If you go to the probably the most difficult part or the one that's the engine of, of the ZKVM is the prover. And here, here are a little bit the blocks that we are building. Uh, for more information, you can go to the presentation that I gave in Paris to go more in detail how we're doing more technically. But the idea is we have a, a PIL. PIL means um, a, a polynomial identity language, just to build uh, some polynomial identities. On top of that, we, we, we built all the state machines that will run the, the ZKVM state machines. Here we have the main state machine, but we have a signature for hashing, for arithmetic programming, and so on. On this state machine, in the main like a main processor, we have an assembly, uh, so we can build, we can run programs on this state machine. And the main program that's going to be run is what we call ZKVM. And mainly, what it is is an interpreter. So mainly, it's a program that it, it reads the transactions and executes those transactions. So mainly, we are building a full Ethereum uh, on uh, on top of ZKVM. So we take all the transactions. We analyze the transactions with the code. We check the signature. Uh, if there is a the smart, smart contract deployment, we, we, we put it. We just execute all the states. Okay? And we do it in this, in this uh, thing. So with this, uh, with this approach, the idea is that we can design the state machine very tailor-made so that it's a single program that's going to run on top of that. So we can tailor-made very much in order to be very um, efficient on that, OK? So once we have this, this state machine, we have to execute. When we have a set of transactions, we need to execute those transactions if you want to build all these uh, specific polynomials. With these polynomials, we build a Stark, OK? The Stark, which is going to be a proof itself. And on top of this Stark, instead of, of verifying this Stark directly on mainnet, what we do is we will generate a circuit um, that will be in Gross 16 or in uh, Plonk that will verify this uh, a Stark. And this is the final piece. So it's the final verifier will be very, very cheap. Uh, it's, uh, we are talking about 200, 200K gas just to verify the full ZKVM prover. Okay, so this is the status. Right now, we have built uh, all the pieces. We're finishing the, the, the circuit part right now. Uh, the, the project is quite well defined. And we are just putting all the pieces together. And so we are going, at this point, we're going quite fast. Of course, there is still a lot of work to do, but we are going quite, quite fast at, at this stage. OK? So now I'm going to focus, I want to focus in, the, in bridging. So how do we, uh, so ho how we, we transfer funds from the layer one to layer two, or even from one roll up to another roll up? OK, so this is a, a, a main thing. We have been thinking a lot, improving a lot. And we here we are recovering uh, an old idea that at the beginning of Ethereum, when sharding just before Ethereum 2.0, the people start talking. There, is some, there are some Vitalik conferences talking about that. And this is recovering a little bit the idea. But so the idea, it's so simple, that's interesting. So I want to show how this uh, works. OK? So 
Here we start, for example, with a mainnet. Imagine that in this mainnet uh, there are three rollups running. We call it rollup one, rollup two, and rollup three. And we want to move phones from layer one to rollup two, then to rollup three, and then back to the to the main network. Okay. So the idea here is that what we are doing in each rollup, so each piece, we will have what we call it an exit tree. An exit tree, if you want, is um, it's a well, it's a Merkle tree. It's a it's an at-only Merkle tree, so it's a tree that you cannot remove things, so you are just only adding things. And the idea is that every time that you do um, that, you want to move funds to some other rollup, you you just uh, build this. You just add another leaf in this Merkle tree. In this case, for example, you can say that okay, I want to move. Um, uh, here an RSC 20 of uh, this quantity of value and I want to move it to rollup 3. I can do the same with NFTs or even I can do a, you know, a generic messages just, just to communicate between contracts because some, some, there are some new contracts that can have value not with NFTs or with uh, ERC 20, it can have other, other ideas. So the idea is that we add one of these uh, things in the tree, okay? So each rollup or the main net have one of those trees, and then when, what we are doing, the idea is that in the mainnet we are building uh, what we call it a global exit tree. It's a tree that includes all the trees of the all the rollups and even the tree of the of the main of the of the main tree. So with a single global exit uh, uh, with a single global exit tree root, we can have all the exits that has been in all the networks, the layer one and layer two. Okay, so this is the, the structure that we are building. So how would it work? Okay, imagine that we have a token, uh, we have Matic tokens and we want to transfer to, uh, to a, to a rollup, to a layer one. So well, we would send this to a bridge contract, okay? This bridge contract would write this leaf in this uh, exit tree of the, of the layer one, okay? And this will be published, this also will be added to the global uh, tree exit tree. Okay. Then, um, when a rollup creates um, creates um, a batch, actually there is an exchange of information between the rollup, so between the ro the layer one and the layer two. This, of course, the 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 the, the layer one. So the rollup, the batch of the rollup is uh, forged in la layer one. So what we do here is we just pass a hash. You know, we, we take the global exit tree and we store this in the rollup, in the in the rollup state, and we take the exit tree of this rollup state and we add it in the global exit tree on the layer one. And this happens in uh, in a batch transaction every time that a transaction is batch. And this is the most important thing: only one hash, so only one 32 bytes are moved from the rollup every time that the rollup is batched. And only 32 bytes are moving from the rollup to the global to the global state. Okay, so once we deposit the, the matics, this then this this transfer new batch happening. So this transfer happens. So now this state is in the rollup. So inside the rollup, if it's a zkVM in this case, what we can do is we can withdraw these rollups. So we do with a Merkle proof. Mainly we are proving that this exit tree happens. So is in this in this global exit tree, and of course we we nullify we 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 just mark this and in order not to withdraw it two times, so we mark it as uh, two times. Okay, so now what we have is a kind of a wrapper. This is a double circle. We have a wrapper that represents the ERC twenty inside the inside the rollup. Okay, so imagine that now we want to move this token. So this token to from rollup three to rollup two, okay. We do exactly the same. We send these rapid tokens to the bridge uh, smart contract in the layer two rollup three. A new um, a new um, leaf in the local exit tree of this rollup is is added. Of course, this 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 rapid token is in this case is burn. It's not lock. It's burn because it, this belongs to another. The, the origin of this token is the uh, layer one in this case. Okay. 
Then there is a transfer. So once this, there is a transfer between layer two and layer one, so this exchange of information is put. So all this exit is stored in the, in the global exit tree of the, of the root. Okay? This is in for the rollup three. Then it happens exactly the same for rollup two. Rollup two, we transfer this global state to the global state to the rollup two. And now we are in rollup two and we do exactly the same, we do exactly the same procedure. We can just prove that there is this, uh, this leaf in the global exit tree with a Merkle proof or a zero knowledge in this case, we can do it. And then we just create this ERC20 uh, wrapper in this rollup two, okay? For, imagine that we want to go back to the layer one. We do exactly the same. We send this to the bridge. The bridge is, is born, just born the, these rapid tokens. It adds, um, it adds uh, uh, a leaf in the local Merkle, the local Merkle tree, saying that in this case, the destination is layer one with a specific owner, okay? Transfer of information happens between this rollup layer two and the, and the, and the main net, so in the global tree. And then already in layer one, we just withdraw. So we can withdraw from the bridge. Just doing a single, again, just with a single proof, and of course with a nullifier. So this is very simple. It's a very simple uh, uh, approach, but this allows to bridge between rollups and between uh, layer one and layer two in a universal manner, okay? There are some open questions, I just put it here. The thing is, for example, how we whitelist rollups. This is one of the interesting things here. There are some ideas. And the other is, I think, and this is just open, but I think it would be a good idea to have a kind of ERC standard for bridging in here. So I just put the things open just for people to think about it. And yeah, that's very, my, that's very much what I wanted to talk. We're just, this is the goal. Polygon just building, having one billion users using it, and thank you very much. So, thank you very much, Jordi, for this uh, nice presentation. Do we have a um, question in the audience? We have time for questions. I'm sure there is some questions in your mind, but please. Okay, Jordi, do you have any, oh, yeah, there is. Hey, uh, really cool presentation, uh, thank you. I'm curious if you have a benchmark of how much you expect like this message sending in terms of costs and overhead, how much does it include and how does it grow I depending? Up here. I cannot, I cannot get it. How expensive is it to do this bridging? How expensive is the, the how expensive is the transfer? Yeah, this is for the, yeah, the, the idea is, the, the, the cool thing here is that, of course, the layer one transactions, the layer one transactions um, are uh, expensive. It's like a transfer. This would be a little bit like when uh, the same cost that would be, for example, when you are staking uh, to layer two because you are adding to this Merkle tree some way, so the cost would be around there. You could do it, you could do even do it with a Merkle proof or aggregating things, so you think you can do things in order to load the case, but for in layer one, uh, this is things, but the cool thing here is that uh, once you are in layer twos and from transferring from one layer two and to other layer two, the cost is um, is free because all these transfers, all these transfers, all these transfers of information are happening always, and it's every time that uh, a, a, a block is happening. So it's not one single transfer per transfer. This happens um, once per batch. So. The, every time that you transfer here, maybe you are aggregating all the transfers that happen there. So it, it, it works. Um, so it, it just uh, moves for back and forth. So once you are in layer twos, uh, it's free. Of course, when you are going back. Yeah, but my question is more like the Merkle proof parts because the Merkle proof, as the tree yeah. grows, the call data for you to actually submit this proof gets more expensive for the rollup. Yeah, so I'm curious if there is maybe a different construct or approach that you can actually minimize this part of the cost that the user feels a lot, right? So when a Merkle proof is, so verifying the Merkle proof is, um, is, is not that expensive. Eh? It's because uh, imagine that 32 levels Merkle proof I think that SHA, the, the KCAC is 50, 
So 50 times 32, this is not much uh, in, 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 in the, but it's in the still verification. Cold data. Oh, the, 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 what's expensive is the, the, the storage, that you need to save the storage. But the storage, the, the cool thing here is that just check, for example, the, the Ethereum 2 uh, deposit. They are, doing, they are working with exactly these ways. And the idea is that you, don't, you modify just uh, lock, two, uh, lock two elements in the tree. So you don't have to write out. And you are recycling. So you are, you are not creating new ones. You are recycling, which is a little, it's cheaper in the, it's cheaper in the, in the, in the gas cost. Um, in any case, um, I, would, I, be, I, would, I believe that uh, once layer twos are mainstream somewhere, I, don't th I think that most of the people will stay in layer two, so we'll not go back to layer ones in most of the cases. Right now, for example, in Hermes, you can already, for example, withdraw uh, tokens in layer two. You can do payments, you can work in layer two, you can deposit maybe to an exchange layer two. So most of the, I, I expect that in near future, uh, everybody will work in layer two and layer one uh, will be just uh, anecdotic and just for, for validity proofs mainly. But this is, I don't know, half the crystal ball. That's what. Thank you. Great answer. Another one. Uh, hi, Jordi. Um, I have a question, which is in this setup, do we assume that all the individual layer twos need to sign up to have their exit routes going out by the same exit tree? Yeah, this is, this is I don't, I'm not sure if you understand, this is if all the layer twos have to sign up for these things. This is the, the when I talk about the open questions, is how do I wait list or roll up? This is a, a thing. One thing to do, and here maybe I'm going a little deep here, is that uh, in, the, in the record, maybe you can, here you can add an entry that says what are the trusted roll ups. So when you are depositing, when you are depositing the, the tokens, you can say, okay, I'm depositing these tokens here, but only this roll up, this roll up, and this roll up is valid, okay? This is one way. The problem here of, the, of doing this is that then you will have in the layer twos, in the, in the, once you are in the layer twos, you will have different ERC's 20s. You will have different tokens because some of them will have one security, so they will be like good for some, to some, some roll ups and others will be for some other roll ups. Maybe that's not an issue because at the end is they, they all represent the same token, but uh, it's something that we need to think about and it's not, uh, it's an open topic. Okay. Right now we are building one roll up, so in some, in some way we have this solved for us, but it would be good to be this to be solved for any roll up uh, on for any uh, layer two solution here and have a standard way to do this. Okay, thank you for the answer. I think we have time for a last question. Um, I think there are already someone in the, ba in the back. Uh, hi. Are you planning uh, to use uh, ZK Snarks like Blonk uh, uh, in your ZK EVM implementation? I cannot hear anything. Uh, <laughs> I, th I see uh, if we are running some Snarks. Yes, uh, uh, my question is about are you planning to use uh, Snarks uh, uh, in part of uh, your implementation of ZK EVM? We are, right now, what we are doing is uh, what, what we are doing mainly is a Stark. So we are, the, the, the main proof is gonna be a Stark. And uh, what we are doing on, uh, is instead of verif verifying this Stark directly on mainnet, what we are doing is we are verifying this Stark in a Plonk or Growth 16 circuit. And in the mainnet we are only verifying the proof of the proof, this one level of recursion, if you want. So we have a Stark, a verifier. And I, I don't know if, I couldn't hear very good the question, but this is uh, what we are doing in uh, uh, this is Snark. The, this is the answer, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can talk now later if you want. Because, uh, well, guys, thank you very much. And any yeah. question, we are... Thank you, Jordi, for everything.